Here's how I can inflate the logo by pinning the logo to the plane here in Blender. Press Shift plus A, go to Mesh, select Plane. So in order to make this correctly, we're gonna to need to scale this up five times. So I'm gonna press the letter S for scale and type in five, press Enter. Let's go up here and click on the Z axis to view it from the top. If you wanna create this effect on a rectangle, you can go here to the scale X and type in the value, whichever you like, and create a rectangle shape on this size but I'm gonna go with a square. From here, press tab to go to edit mode, or you can go here and select edit mode. Here we're gonna press control R, and I'm gonna go somewhere up here to the middle where you can see this line. Now click it, don't move the cursor and click again, and now press A to select everything. Right click on the plane and select subdivide. And here you're gonna need to press Shift plus Alt five times to multiply the subdivisions. So I'm gonna press Shift plus R, one, two, three, four, five. Let's go and exit the edit mode, go to object mode, and I'm gonna go to the playback, bring it up, and let's switch it to geometry node editor. Press N, click on new, and here we're gonna go to the data. Let's go to vertex groups, click on plus, and I'm gonna double click on the group, rename this as pin, enter, and let's go here to the nodes and zoom in. I'm gonna press Shift plus A, search for store named, enter, place it in between the nodes. I'm gonna put it here, press Shift plus A again, search for image texture, enter, place it here. Let's go to vector, bring it here, and search for named. And here we're gonna to need to go to the name and switch it to UV map. And here at the image texture, we're gonna to need to upload the image that we're gonna to need to use. So before uploading it, I'm gonna to go to Illustrator and show you how to make it. And here I get the vector image that I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna scale it up and we're gonna to need to add a black background. So first I'm gonna to go to the fill here and I'm gonna swap it. So the fill is gonna be black and the stroke is gonna be white. So I'm gonna click on the fill so it's gonna be on the top. Let's go and select the rectangle. And I'm gonna go here to the corner, press on shift, make sure to intersect and drag it and make sure to intersect at the right side of the page. There you go. So as you can see, it's going to put a white frame. So I'm gonna select it. Let's go to the stroke. Let's go to align stroke and make sure that the align stroke is inside. Click on this and let's go and increase the stroke weight. So it's gonna increase the frame thickness. All right, so as you can see, we don't have any logo right here. So I'm gonna right click on the rectangle. Let's go to arrange and select send to back. Now, if I hover with the mouse on it, you can see here is the logo. I'm going to select it. And let's go to the color and select the white color. So this is very important to work with black and white. And I'm going to increase the frame a lot more. So I'm going to go back to the stroke here at the properties, increase it. And I'm going to go with 84. So make sure to have a thick frame like this. I'm also going to go here to the circle, drag it. Make sure to export it as a JPEG. And now we can go back to Blender, go to image texture, click on open. Let's go and search for the logo, click on open. And here at the image texture, I'm gonna go to the repeat and change it to clip. Let's go and connect the color to value. And we're gonna click on the name and change it to pin, click on it. So now we get the logo set up and all you need to do is go here to the physics, click on the cloth. I'm gonna go to quality steps, type in three, speed multiplier, I'm gonna go with 0.3. Let's scroll down, activate the pressure. I'm gonna increase it to 110. Let's go to cache, scroll down, and decrease the end to 100. And we're gonna need to check the disk cache, but as you can see, it's unavailable. So first we're gonna need to save the file. Let's go to file, save as, and save it wherever you want. Now let's go back to cache, and now you can activate the disk cache. Let's go down to shape, open it up, scroll down. Let's go to pin group, click on it, and select the pin. And we're gonna to go to the shrinking factor and here I'm gonna type in minus 0.3. Enter, open up the collision, scroll down, activate the self collisions, scroll up to the bake. Now before we bake this, I also remember that I'm gonna to need to add a subdivision mesh. So I'm gonna go here to the modifier and select the geometry node, click here. And let's go back to the nodes. I'm gonna bring the group input here, press Shift plus A and search for subdivide mesh. Enter, and I'm gonna place it in between these nodes, and we're gonna go with level one. Now let's go back to physics, scroll down, and click on a bake. Now wait until it's gonna render it, and after it's finished, I'm gonna split the screen here, 
and I'm gonna change it to timeline. Here we can hit play. And now I'm gonna go to the shader editor. Let's go to shader editor here. And I'm gonna add a texture. Make sure you're on object, click on new. Press shift plus A, search for image texture. Enter, place it here. Connect color to base color. And I'm also gonna to need to smoothen this out. Right click on it, shade smooth. There you go. And here I'm gonna click on the image texture, open. And I'm gonna import one of these logos. Click on open. And here I'm gonna select the viewport shading. Hit play, and there you go. You also can add a subdivision modifier to make it even more smoother. So let's go back to the modifier, add modifier, search for subdivision surface, enter. And I'm gonna go with level viewport one, render one. And pretty much that's it. Thanks for watching.